As with other countries, New Zealand's 200 nautical miles exclusive economic zone gives its fishing industry special fishing rights. It covers 4.1 million square kilometres. This is the sixth largest zone in the world, and is 14 times the land area of New Zealand itself. The New Zealand zone has a rich and unusually complex underwater topography. Over 15,000 marine species are known to live there, about 10% of the world's diversity. Many of these are migratory species, but New Zealand's isolation means also that many of the marine species are unique to New Zealand. Topic: <laughs> Statistics. New Zealand's wild fisheries captured 441,000 tons and earned over 1 billion dollars in exports in the fishing year 2006-07. The aquaculture of mussels, salmon and oysters earned another $226 million. This made seafood the country's fifth largest export earner. There are about 2 tons of fish in the New Zealand fisheries for every New Zealander. Just under 10% of this stock is harvested each year. In the fishing year 2006-07, there were 1,316 commercial fishing vessels and 229 processors and licensed fish receivers, employing 7,155 people. About 1.2 million or 31% of New Zealanders engage, at least occasionally, in recreational fishing with an annual recreational take of about 25,000 tonnes. Historical development Traditionally New Zealand's fishing industry was an inshore one largely confined to the domestic market. From 1938 to 1963, there was a licensing system operating, involving gear and area controls. Starting in the 1960s, the offshore waters, outside the then 12 nautical mile territorial sea, were exploited by Japanese, Taiwanese, South Korean, and Soviet trawlers. In 1977, the 200 nautical mile exclusive economic zone was established. These zones were established because countries wanted protection from foreign fishing vessels. Because New Zealand's territory includes the Chatham Islands and other outer islands, its EEZ is 4.1 million square kilometres, the sixth largest fishing zone in the world. This was a huge resource, and expectations were high. The inshore fisheries had become over-exploited, and the search was on for new offshore fisheries. New Zealand companies embarked on joint ventures with foreign companies. Trawling crews from other nations taught New Zealanders how to fish deep waters and in return got a share of the catch. By 1980 the consequences of the «think big» policy for the fishing industry were becoming very apparent. Mel Courtney, MP for Nelson and convener of the Opposition Fisheries Subcommittee on Production and Marketing, in asserting, «the policy is falling apart», expressed the view of many, «the industry expanded so rapidly it was overcapitalizing with too many boats, the inshore fleet expanded and joint venture and duty-free boats exerted further pressure." Commercial fishing June 1985. Deep water trawling is highly mechanized and massive capital investment is normally required to operate modern factory trawlers. These ships process everything caught on board. Even the guts and heads are processed into fish meal, which is so valuable it is known as brown gold. Elsewhere, major fisheries, such the Northern Hemisphere cod fisheries, were collapsing. Fishing companies in New Zealand were able to buy or lease the redundant trawlers cheaply. At the same time, the collapse of northern fisheries resulted in an unmet need in the world market for quality whitefish. Hokey and orange ruffy from New Zealand were in demand. In 1986, New Zealand became the first country to introduce a property rights based quota management system. QMS system. There are currently 2008-129 species which are targeted commercially. There are about 60 species groups with a QMS allowance for customary Maori fishers, with a similar number for recreational fishers. The fisheries are managed through the Fisheries Act 1996, which sets out the rules and regulations and the QMS was administered by the Ministry of Fisheries until April 2012 when it was amalgamated into the Ministry for Primary Industries. The fishery in the 2000s By 2000, the industry had developed from being a domestic supplier to exporting over 90% of the fish harvest. Since 
Topic: <laughs> Fishing grounds. Coastal estuaries. New Zealand's 15,000 km coastline. Coastal fisheries have access to a large continental shelf, and further afield are large continental rises. Together these relatively shallow fishing grounds occupy about 30% of the area of the EEZ. Yet further out in the deep ocean lie undersea mountain ranges and volcanoes, and deep oceanic trenches. The 10,000 m deep Kermadec Trench is the second deepest trench on Earth. High seas fishing The high seas are those areas of ocean that are not covered by any country's exclusive economic zone. New Zealand has international obligations to ensure New Zealand flagged vessels are aligned with proper conservation and management of the high seas fisheries. These are met in Part 6A of the Fisheries Act 1996. These obligations come from the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea and the 1995 Straddling Fish Stocks Agreement. Topic: <inaudible> Maori role. The Treaty of Waitangi guaranteed the Maori, the indigenous people of New Zealand, undisturbed possession of the fisheries until they chose to dispose of them to the Crown. They have been provided with a substantial stake in commercial fishing as part of the treaty settlement. After the quota management system was established, the government purchased back 10% of the quota share and gave it to the Treaty of Waitangi Fisheries Commission for the benefit of Maori. In 1992, the government allocated a cash settlement to Maori which they used to buy a half share of Sealord, the country's largest fishing company. In addition, the government has given Maori 20% of the commercial quota share of new species introduces to the quota management system, and the equivalent of 20% of all marine farming space created around New Zealand coasts and harbours. In 2004, Parliament approved the allocation of additional significant fisheries assets to iwi. Te Ohu Kai Moana is implementing this allocation. Maori have now built their commercial stake to the point where they control or influence more than 30% of the commercial fisheries. Topic: <inaudible> Timeline. 1790s sealers and whalers arrive. 1875 seal hunting restricted to a short annual season. 1894 – Protection of fur seal population due to declining numbers. 1908 – The Fisheries Act 1908 is passed 1977 – The Territorial Sea and Exclusive Economic Zone Act is passed. 1979 – Marine Mammals Protection Act came into force. 1983 – Fisheries Act 1983 comes into force establishes a fishing quota system 1986 – Quota Management System QMS introduced to conserve fish stocks within the exclusive economic zone 1989 – Maori Fisheries Act is passed 1996 – Fisheries Act 1996 is passed though parts of it come into force only spasmodically over the next few years 2000 – Moratorium on new marine farming applications, initially for two years 2003, Ministry of Agriculture and Forestry, Ministry for the Environment, and Fonterra sign the Daring and Clean Streams Accord. 2004, Moratorium on Marine Farms lifted after the passage of the Aquaculture Reform Repeals and Transitional Provisions Act 2004. 2005, first criminal conviction for killing a fur seal is handed down. 2005 – 35 squid boats ordered to return to port from their sub-Antarctic fishing grounds for breaking a voluntary code of practice designed to protect seabirds. 2006 – The New Zealand fishing industry proposes limits on bottom trawling. 2006 – New Zealand fisheries officers request to be allowed to carry batons and pepper spray is denied. 2007 – Great white sharks given protection within New Zealand's EEZ. 2007 – Bottom trawling prohibited in selected areas. 2007 – The orange ruffy fishery is closed to allow stocks of the fish to recover. See also Aquaculture in New Zealand Agriculture in New Zealand Exclusive Economic Zone of New Zealand